The results of the recent Toronto by-election have exploded like a bombshell onto the Canadian political landscape. The defeat of Liberal candidate Leslie Church by Conservative Don Stewart has cracked the foundations of the Liberal fortress in a riding they have commanded for 30 years. And now Trudeau is more anxious and afraid for his position in power than ever before. Sticking damage control, Trudeau murmured familiar platitudes about hearing frustrated citizens. But these words ring hollow from a prime minister who proudly spurned critics just to appease the woke mob. The Toronto embarrassment ignited a legitimacy crisis for Trudeau's rudderless liberals. With conservative momentum growing, the liberal ship sails aimlessly without a credible captain. Welcome back to Street Politics Canada. Before we dive into today's video, take a quick second to follow us on Twitter. You won't find the blunt truth about Trudeau's endless scandals in the mainstream media. Their liberal bias hides the real stories. But our Twitter feed breaks through the spin and cover-ups. We tweet multiple times daily, delivering straight facts on Trudeau's hypocrisy and failures. We'll leave you the link down in the description box. Tap that follow button now so you never miss our next viral tweet roasting Trudeau. Now let's dive into today's crazy developments. We kept saying time and time again how all this blatant corruption and egregious level of incompetence coming from the Trudeau administration will inevitably lead to their humiliating and very much public downfall. Every hardworking Canadian with just a little bit of common sense can tell how this whole Toronto by-election scenario was going to go down and how it was going to harm the Liberals and Trudeau more than they could ever possibly predict and anticipate. But every time someone sounded the alarms and thought heavily about the implications of the Toronto by-election on Trudeau's position of power, they were lambasted and ignored as if they were shouting out conspiracy theories. And yet here we are and the Toronto St. Paul riding by-election is over and done with, with the winner being none other than the conservative candidate Don Stewart, who garnered more than 15,000 votes and beat the Liberals' candidate Leslie Church by a wide margin. Just so that Trudeau couldn't bullshit his way into saying it was a close race to begin with. This is a riding that the Liberals have held for over 30 years, and it just so happens that they lose it under the leadership of none other than Trudeau himself. The Liberals were so condescending and confident that they probably turned the staunch supporters into people praying for their downfall. And now that the downfall is here and the reality is slapping them right in the face, Trudeau was panicking and trying to calm down the raging fire that he fueled alongside his corrupt party for the last nine years or so. Trudeau was out there giving a speech about how he will waste the taxpayers' money and spend it all on even more useless and woke liberal government programs. But the Toronto by-election situation was so heated and dire for the state of the Liberal Party that Trudeau felt the need to get it over with and address it once and for all. And you might be asking yourself, what could he possibly say after this humiliating defeat? Well, you would be surprised to find out that he actually congratulated the Conservative candidate Don Stewart, but not before praising his own Liberal candidate Leslie Church and her tenacity to stay in a losing fight of all things. You can tell Trudeau was anxious even talking about the situation because he praised the people of St. Paul as well for voicing their opinions. And then in a shocking moment of self-reflection, Trudeau stated how he understands how Canadians are frustrated with his regime and their voices are making the Liberals pay more attention and get to work even harder to deliver for them, a Canada they can be proud of. And before I wrap up, I would like to say a few words about last night's by-election. First, uh, I want to thank all the volunteers and candidates for putting their name forward and participating in this important democratic exercise, including our tremendous Liberal candidate, Leslie Church, who ran a strong and positive campaign. I also want to congratulate Don Stewart on his victory in this tightly fought race. But most of all, I want to thank the people of Toronto St. Paul's for exercising your right to vote and making your voice heard. Now, this was obviously not the result we wanted, but I want to be clear that I hear people's concerns and frustrations. These are not easy times, and it's clear that I and my entire Liberal team have much more work to do to deliver tangible, real progress that Canadians across the country can see and feel. We'll never stop working and fighting to make sure that people have what they need to get through these tough times. My focus is on your success, and that's where it's going to stay. A fresh load of liberal hogwash, if you ask me. Trudeau promises all of this just as he was done giving a speech about yet another useless and woke government initiative. Instead of admitting to his faults and actually taking the steps to work to a better Canada for all Canadians, Instead of stepping down as a failed prime minister and give the people what they truly deserve, Trudeau chooses to keep doing what the Liberals have been doing all week anyway before the Toronto by-election, 
but instead he says it in a much more defeated tone. Let us remind you that with all the mounting pressure on Trudeau and the Liberals to retain this very same Toronto riding, the Liberals were too damn busy trying to sell Canadians on their costly budget that will invest in more woke and useless programs. Our government is delivering fairness for every generation, and we are investing in Canada's arts and culture sector because that is an important part of our plan. We know that arts and culture make our communities more vibrant while supporting the economy at the same time. The Harbourfront Centre is very much a part of Toronto's and Canada's amazing arch, arts and culture scene. It is Toronto's waterfront home for unique program programming, ranging from dancing and theatre shows to writing festivals to arts exhibitions. It's a place for family and friends to gather, and we see here today some families just having a wonderful time. Uh, and it's a magnet. It's a, it's a place that brings people to our city's beautiful waterfront while also taking advantage of the great things our city has to offer. But as a Toronto MP, I know that the Harbourfront Centre is facing some significant challenges. Like many arts and culture organizations, COVID was really hard and the pandemic took a real toll here at the Harbourfront Centre. It has been hard to recover and to get back to the level of activity you had before 2021. Our government recognizes that and we know that we need you to come roaring back so that Toronto and our country can come roaring back. And that's why in this year's budget, we stepped up. Our government is investing $10 million over two years to support the Harbourfront Center's ability to complete critical repairs so you can continue welcoming visitors from across Toronto, from across Ontario, from across Canada, and from around the world. The Harbourfront Centre is such an important Toronto institution. It's also a key economic and cultural asset for our city, attracting millions of visitors every year. With this funding, we are helping the Harbourfront Centre to thrive for many years to come and to be a part of the lives of millions and millions of people in Toronto, in Ontario, across the country. Our government, when we first got elected, we pledged to do politics differently. Uh, we rejected the idea of right-wing trickle-down economics. On s'est engagé à réparer les dommages causés par les coupures du gouvernement précédent en investissant dans des programmes sociaux essentiels et on a promis de faire du Canada un endroit toujours plus équitable et plus, et plus prospère. And that work on making sure that everyone has a real and fair chance, that we're creating opportunities for everyone to prosper by reinvesting in the social programs that had been cut previously, we've seen that we've been able to make important progress. We introduced the Canada Child Benefit uh, that'll be actually increasing next month by about $350 for the most low-income families across the country. We introduce $10 a day childcare. We're bringing forward measures that are providing families here in Nova Scotia about uh, $13,000 in savings per child every single year through the reductions in the federal investments in childcare. But we know that these are really difficult times. Even with inflation coming down, even with interest rates starting to come down, and there's positive signs, the prices for everything are just too high. We know how families are squeezed, which is why we've been acting not just with slogans designed to make people even matter about the situation, but bringing forward real solutions. Just last April, we brought forward a budget that's focused on delivering fairness for every generation. That's a big claim. So what does that involve? It involves bringing in things like free insulin and diabetes medication and free contraceptive medication and devices. On met également en œuvre le régime canadien de soins dentaires, qui a déjà permis à plus de 200 000 aînés 
d'aller chez le dentiste au cours des six dernières semaines. Le Canada Dental, uh, Dental Program has made a huge impact on seniors right across the country, and there is so much more to do. As of next week, the Canada Dental Program uh, will be opened up to kids under 18 uh, and Canadians of all ages uh, living uh, with disabilities. And when they were confronted with the dire state of the political party, they spout the same tired old speech about how Leslie Church is a great candidate and a good representation for the people and all the usual liberal lies and manipulation tactics. Tomorrow's by-election, Toronto St. Paul's. Uh, by all accounts and polling indicates it's going to be a very, very close election in what has been a very, very safe liberal seat for a long, long time. Uh, can you reflect on why Torontonians would feel that way about the Liberal Party? Um, well, thank you for the question. Uh, and I have been out campaigning, knocking on doors a lot in St. Paul's over the past month. So I'd really like to start by paying tribute to Carolyn Bennett. Uh, she is a truly great Canadian. She has been an outstanding MP. Um, for me personally, really important and a really important mentor. And one thing I've really learned at the doors is how deeply the people of St. Paul's appreciate, and I would even say love, Carolyn. Uh, Carolyn used to say at every election that it got easier as time went on because the baby, more of the babies she delivered got old enough to vote. And she said the best way to get someone to vote for you is to actually deliver them. And it was kind of a joke. Um, but yesterday I was campaigning and I spoke to an older couple and they said, oh, please tell Carolyn she was our family doctor, we love her. And then I told this story about how Carolyn counted on the votes of the babies she delivered. And this couple yesterday afternoon said, oh, she delivered our kid too. Um, so I really want to pay tribute to Carolyn who contributed so much to St. Paul's and to Canada and had a truly unique connection, unique and deep to her community. Those are really big shoes to fill. I am really confident that our liberal candidate, Leslie Church, is a really worthy successor to Carolyn Bennett. Leslie is a lawyer. She's a mother of three. She, one of, I think one of the, her central accomplishments has been working on our national plan for early learning and childcare, which is already contributing a lot to families across Toronto, across Ontario, and to families in St. Paul's. And I really believe that, you know, following in Carolyn's amazing footsteps, I think Leslie would make a great servant and advocate for the people of St. Paul's. As you said in your question, we are taking nothing for granted. Leslie is working her heart out and the whole team is there with her. And we're just gonna keep on working until the last minute. And I do just also wanna say to everyone, please come out and vote. They talk about the same few topics and concepts, concepts that they themselves could never be familiar with, things like integrity, upholding virtue, and giving back to the people. Freeland likes to attribute these values to the Liberal Party and to Leslie Church herself, but Canadians are smarter than Freeland gives them credit for, and they will not simply believe any bullshit coming from her mouth. Especially when she ends her valiant speech by throwing unnecessary jabs at the Conservative opposition, calling them cruel and cold to the Canadian people. Uh, well, thank you for the question. Uh, today is an important day in Toronto St. Paul's. There's an important by-election there. Uh, I just want to first reflect on the fact that, you know, we are really lucky to live in a democracy and we should never take our democracy for granted. And I really encourage everyone who lives in St. Paul's to get out there and vote. Uh, living in, in a democracy is a privilege and we should exercise that sacred right. This is an important by-election because it is about a choice between two visions of Canada, two sets of values. 
I really want to encourage people to vote for our outstanding, hardworking candidate, Leslie Church, our hardworking liberal candidate, Leslie Church. What she stands for is the values we are talking about here today. She stands for a vision of Canada, which is about investing in Canada, investing in essential industries like our car sector, being sure that Canada can own the podium, investing in Canadian workers, like the amazing workers who are here, investing in Canadian families with things like our national system of early learning and childcare, which is helping so many Toronto families with affordability, saving more than 8,000 per year per child already. And we're not yet at $10 a day, we're gonna get there. And at the end of the day, a vision which believes in a Canada that plays as Team Canada, where we all work together to support and defend the national interest as you are seeing here today with unions, with industry, with government. That is Leslie's vision, that's the Liberal vision. That's why I'm really calling on the people of St. Paul's to go out there and vote for her because the alternative is really cold and cruel and small. The alternative is cuts and austerity not believing in ourselves as a country, not believing in our communities and in our neighbors. But this is what the Liberals have always been good for. They can throw jabs all they want, but they can never live up to their own standards. They will speak like they own the world and then whine about the people not seeing their way when push comes to shove. And just because of that, Canadians can't wait for the ultimate Trudeau meltdown after he loses the only thing he ever gained in his miserable life. Well, that's all for now. What do you think is Trudeau's next move after the Toronto by-election loss? Let us know what you think in the comments below. And if you haven't, please subscribe and leave a like for this video. Your support helps us continue our work. You can also subscribe to our newsletter, where we share daily uncensored and unbiased news straight to your inbox. You can find the link in the description below. Thanks again for your support, and I'll see you in the next one.